Hey everybody, Dan Woji here for Megascans. This tutorial is a start to finish look into how I develop a scene. The goals of this scene is to see what I could come up with using the assets from the Megascan stump pack and some atlases of moss sprinkled in as well. Some important points I want to hit on are how to prep assets, setting up a camera, lighting, depth of field, scene composition, scatter techniques, and at the end, color correction. All right, let's get down to it. So the first important part of building any scene is having great reference. So I went and downloaded a bunch of fungi and mushrooms, any image that I liked, the layout of the leaves and the sticks and the scattered debris, moss, uh, the general chaos of the scattered debris, those were very important to me. Uh, I landed on this image right here with uh, the moss, the scattering. I love the reeds coming in and out of depth of field. I like the cloud cover of it, it's really cool. Uh, then this other one up here, I really like the depth of field, I like the colors, uh, very rich. Uh, this one, I didn't lean to as much as the other one, uh, but then there's this other image with some great uh, dirt in it. Uh, these little bits here are awesome and key to making a scene feel micro and, and come alive. I'm going to briefly go over how to make geometry cards out of Atlas opacity maps. The reason I like doing this is because it gives a great shape and you have a really good idea of what's going on in your scene. I've done this tutorial in depth. Uh, you could check it out on our YouTube channel, uh, but I'll, I'll briefly go over this. So what you do is you bring in a plane and divide it up to about a million polygons. Make sure the smoothing is off and then you import your alpha from the atlas that you want to replicate and you go over to masking and uh, it's called mask by alpha and you inverse it and uh, bleed out the the mask and you sharpen it and bleed it out a little bit more and grow it sharpen it and then fill in uh, the the gaps that are left and then the really important part is you need to draw masking squares in each corner. Uh, what this does is it creates geometry so the UV mapping can align to the plane perfectly. Once the masking's done, go ahead and hit Make Poly Mesh 3D. The masking's going to disappear, but it's still there. Uh, it's in the subtool, and all you have to do is export the correct geometry and then bring it into Max. Once it's in max, go ahead and apply the shader and then apply a UVW map. Uh, usually you'll have to flip the U tile or the V tile to get it to line up. Uh, then detach the, the border indicators. And then after that's detached, we're gonna apply a pro optimize to the main mesh. Um, when you apply the pro optimize, make sure that you enable keep textures and hit calculate. And after that's done calculating, um, I usually usually do it about one or two percent. That that's enough reduction. What this does is it cleans up the borders and just makes it generally a nicer mesh to work with. After that, I apply a subdivide. Uh, usually, like for moss or for uh, uh, other plant atlases, I don't subdivide it as much, but for this one, I'm subdividing it slightly higher because I want to apply a displacement modifier. So I apply a live displacement modifier and point it to the displacement map and play with the strength, uh, making sure that the luminous center is turned on. And I just play with it until I get the, the shape that I want. Then I'll collapse and break out the border guides and then explode the geometry so each part is its own asset. I'll do a render really quick to make sure that everything is looking good. Okay, this is looking cool, I'm happy with this. So now I'm gonna import my stump and do a final render of my palette just to make sure that everything's working together and I have the right pieces and just feels right. Everything is looking really great. I'm gonna start building up my scene. So the first thing I do when developing a scene is get a basic layout approximately where I want my hero pieces 
and then I build a Redshift Sun system. I just used the default settings. It's great out of the box to get an idea of what's going on. I just do some basic adjust adjustments to how high the sun is or how low it is, and I basically leave everything else alone. Real quickly, I'm going to throw in a ground plane uh, just to get some a point of reference of where the, the ground will be. Later on, I'm going to build out a more detailed ground, but I just need a, something basic right now. Then I'm going to adjust my camera, uh, start getting my positioning uh, a little bit better, just to approximate it a little bit so I have an idea of where this is going. The one thing that I really want to establish right off the bat is, since this is a very micro scene, depth of field will be a key component in making this scene successful. So right away, I want to dial in how this depth of field is going to look. And it usually takes some tinkering, and, but I want to find where there's a sliver of detail in the final render that's gonna, that's gonna show up. And I, I want to focus all my attention on the the set dressing making it look really cool using the the key components in this sliver of of in focus detail i don't want to spend my time building up this huge scene and then most of it gets just drowned out in in depth of field so taking the time right off the bat to figure out where that sliver is key when developing a shot like this so the important aspects of refining your lighting and depth of field are your focal plane, which is obviously the main area of focus, your f-stop. In this case, I experimented with 4, 5.6, and 8. Uh, your shutter time ratio. Uh, the smaller the value, the longer the shutter stays open, so the brighter the image is. So you have to mess with that depending on which f-stop you choose. The distance of the camera to the subject in the field of view are also very important. Uh, all these factors will determine if your depth of field is accurate or not. Uh, one thing I've always done in the past is look at the metadata for any reference photos I use. It will reveal some useful information like the, the millimeter of the lens, f-stop, shutter speeds. With this information, I loosely dial in the basic settings. So specifically to redshift, what determines the depth of field is the bouquet lens effect. This is applied in the effects section of the environment and effects tab in Max. The two settings that will determine how the depth of field will function are the power and the COC radius. These settings vary greatly depending on the scene setup. I ended up lowering the power to get enough of the environment in focus, but later I do end up tweaking it a bit. Uh, as the scene progresses, I, I want to widen it up a little bit more. A key to making a good environment and good renders is never get locked into your initial settings. Always be open to moving your camera, playing with the lighting, and, and trying different things. Once I'm happy with the depth of field, the basic lighting and how the camera is positioned. I'm going to do a little bit of set dressing just to start filling out the scene. Once I'm happy with the way the fungi is looking, I'm going to start building up my ground, my, my foreground area. To do this, I create uh, just a basic plane, take it into ZBrush to detail it out. Nothing fancy to this process. I'm just trying to build up some areas of dirt where the mushrooms have pushed to the ground and uh, the, the stalk of the mushroom is pushing up dirt. Then I'm just trying to imagine uh, just a rough ground, a rough terrain for the uh, scatter assets to be, to be put on. One thing I do keep in mind is I don't want too high of mounds uh, or forest pack will have a hard time uh, filling in all those areas. I, I like to keep it pretty simple. Once I'm happy with my results in ZBrush, I'll bring it into Max and do some final adjustments. So I'll, I'll apply the texture, I'll do a little bit of scaling and, and moving uh, with some fall off just to make it fit. And then I'll go and adjust the assets as well to make sure that they're uh, fitting on the ground correctly. 
the next step is to start building up layers of dirt and debris using forest pack. The first thing I do with that is create a dirt forest pack uh, using uh, scatter geometry that we have scanned. Um, this is full geometry so it works very well scattering. The technique I want to use is instead of applying the dirt to the whole surface, in this case the the ground that I just modeled in ZBrush, I'm going to turn it off and use the paintbrush mode to determine where I want the scattering. This just helps with optimization, uh, a little more control, and I used a lot of forest packs, so it helps in making sure the, heat, the, the scene doesn't get too heavy. After I paint it in, I adjust the threshold and the density uh, to start getting how I want it filled out. So the whole approach of me using Forest Pack and my, my scattering systems is to build up layers, logical layers of this debris and dirt. So my first layer, I want it pretty thick, pretty full uh, to try to fill up as much as possible. Um, after the renderer, I noticed that it's too sparse, so I changed the, the settings. Um, fill it in with the threshold, make it a little bit larger, uh, change the density of the units, and get it a little bit more full. Then what I'll do is I'll clone that exact forest pack, change the seed, so the all the, uh, the assets shift, um, rename it, and uh, change the height and repaint uh, in the areas that I want more dense. Um, uh, play with the fall off a little bit. Uh, the biggest key to this step is in your second forest pack is changing it in the, the Z direction just a little bit because it has to look like it's sitting on, on top of the layer below it. Uh, this really helps selling that there's depth in this ground and it's not just spread over a flat plane. One thing that I noticed in the, the reference is you could really see into past debris, past leaves, past moss, into these dark little crevices and so that's what I'm trying to achieve here. The last dirt forest pack, uh, I'm going to just focus it around the mound of the mushrooms where they've pushed up to give it a feeling of height. Uh, I try to avoid painting this forest pack into the mushroom, so I, I, I make a, I erase it around the rim, and I give it a little bit more push in Z, and uh, again move the seed, play with the rotation, just play with a little bit of everything just to give it some more variation, and you can see how well in this render that it, it just helps uh, sell it's pushing up just a little bit. When I'm done doing the scattering for the dirt, I'm going to move on to the debris scattering. The debris scattering consists of little twigs, sticks, bark, uh, awesome organic material that really brings the scene to life. Working with the debris assets is really fun because of how high frequency they are and how easy they are to scatter and use. So how I work is just like with the dirt, I build up layers of the debris until it feels natural. Uh, one thing to watch out for, it's easy to overdo it, so I just play uh, quite a bit with the density and, and frequency. Uh, you want high frequency detail, but you don't, again, you don't want too much. And again, the whole goal of this scene is to start from the ground up and just build layers. So I just go step by step. So I do my base layer, uh, copy out that forest pack, do uh, bring it up in the Z direction just a little bit so it's sitting on top of the pack below it, and just like the dirt. Uh, and then I go uh, large, medium-ish debris, and then make it smaller as uh, as it builds up in the Z in the Z direction. And at the end here, I'll I'll add in larger sticks, larger chunks of bark and distribute them uh, sparsely uh, just to add little areas of interest uh, as you can see in these renders.
So as you can see, after building up a few layers of the scattered debris, the scene really starts to come to life. At this stage, it's kind of the small and medium debris. I'm going to start adding larger objects, mostly barks with moss on them. Uh, they're going to add just larger areas of interest, uh, break up the high frequency detail that's scattered around everywhere. So it'll give me a good base for adding in my moss later. So at this stage, I'm pretty happy with how the scattering is looking. I like the frequency, I like the breakup, uh, it just feels very natural. Before I move on to the next portion of the scene, which is building up the moss, I do a render with close to final settings just to get a sense of how things are really looking. I love the subsurface of the mushrooms. I like how the lighting's feeling. Uh, I'm pretty comfortable with moving on. The next stage is getting the scene to feel more alive by set dressing in some plants, some grasses, and most importantly, start building up the moss. So to build up the moss, the first thing I do is grab these really nice moss mounds that have a whole different variety of moss on them. And then what's really neat is the moss that was on these mounds was then picked off and scanned individually. So then I can reconstruct uh, what you see here. I use forest pack to build up the little areas of alive and dead moss and then do a little bit of individual set dressing with each card and then bake them down so it makes one object and put them in the scene. Alright, I'm just going to place a few leaves in the scene just to give some variety of shape and color before I do the main patches of moss. So I'm going to use this moss, it's a, a mix of super fuzzy moss and little plants. I like the details and I like how soft it feels. So I'm going to do a basic forest pack, uh, get them in the scene and just start playing around with them. Once I get the basic settings dialed in, I go through each individual set of different plants, like the, the big fuzzy fans and change their scale change their size and then I go through the more tenderly ones and make them fit again by changing their scale, uh, changing their Z position and just how they fit in the scene. So I, I can customize this forest pack um, exactly how I want. As you can see the, the initial render is okay, it de definitely needs some tweaks. So I'm going to go and do a quick round of notes. So I just do some basic color correction to get an idea of how this thing is going to look. I'm happy with this. The first thing that I notice right away is that the depth levels of the middle ground area look a little funky. So I want I need to, some more middle to background to fill in, uh, especially in this area right here. Uh, it just needs more between that mound of moss in the background and this middle ground area. So I'm just going to fill that in. It also needs some uh, build up in this area as well. Another issue I don't like is these leaf clumps are a little too reflective. I want to fix that. And then this foreground little moss bit is too high up and just kind of ugly and in the way. Uh, generally I want to just build up this area a little bit more also this area. What I'm noticing is that there's not enough fine details. So I'm just making a note of getting smaller scatter packs to have more high fidelity. I'm thinking that the background needs a little attention. The grass is pushed a little too far back and it's, uh, we could add some more detail in this. I do like these blacks, these dark shapes. Um, that I'm getting. It adds some nice contrast, so I, I want to make sure I somewhat preserve those. I definitely need some medium distance blades of grass, some reeds, some just uh, more, more detail. Get rid of these guys. I don't like this. I want to push the moss down in the foreground a little bit as well. Okay, so let's go fix this stuff. Okay, so here are the initial adjustments. I've raised this back 
area of moss and adjusted uh, the distribution of the fuzzy moss and just got it to feel a little bit softer, uh, a little bit more filled out. And I really like how it's looking. I'm going to switch between the original notes and what I have now to see what I like, what I don't like. One area that I don't like is I like this push down. I don't like how it's being pushed up, filled up. So I'm going to go and fix that. Again, I need something, yet another tier of detail in this plane. Yeah, definitely need something else back there. So while doing these new tweaks, I wanted to switch over to a more cool lighting solution. And how I did that was I went to the environments tab and copied out the Redshift physical sky and detached the sun uh, deriving the color and just uh, let the the map take over. So what that means is increasing the tensity a little bit and getting a more blue cast on the whole scene to make it less warm. So I'm doing just a, a basic grass scattering behind the mushrooms just to add a little bit of detail. After that's done, I'm now on this stage that I like to call jewelry, just adding these very fine last minute details that really bring the image to life. So I'm going to just build up the moss in a few areas that I want. I really like this fuzzy, long, tenderly moss, so I'm going to put it around in a few areas. I also want to spread around on these foreground and background uh, little moss mounds just to marry the different species to each other. It doesn't need much in the foreground, just a few hits of the same color and texture to make it feel like it's one continuous growing ecosystem of moss. After that, I'm going to start adding in the small detailed bits, uh, just filling it in to give a really high fidelity, high frequency detail. I isolate them and render them on their own just to make sure that they're showing up and they're looking the way that I want. And then I worry about adjusting them and making them feel like they're laying on top of everything. That's about the right size, but I'll have to get more in there and uh, adjust their height. So a, a fun quick way to add detail is making use of what you already have in some of the moss cards. So what I did in particular to get these little dead sticks was I took uh, these moss tendrils and just edited the alpha in Photoshop so they would only show the stem. And the result is this just fine like little stick uh, that adds a lot of nice detail. After that, I'm just going to finesse the moss to get it to fall off the way I want, uh, get this specific card where I want. Um, it's really important that the best looking cards show up in the most interesting areas of detail. I really like these, I don't even know what you call them, but they're almost like these little cup uh, fluty moss bits. and. Um, they look really, really cool, and I have a really cool idea for them later. So that's why I'm taking the time to make sure that they show up in this particular part of the render. Okay, so getting to the final stages of this image. Something was bothering me the whole time while, while building this, and I figured out I didn't like the positioning of the mushrooms. They just felt very non-dominant and not very exciting. And pushing them up in the in Z a little bit gave me a chance to show off a little bit more of the scattering and it makes them feel like they've actually pushed up through the ground a little bit more so they feel more natural. So to finish off this image with something fun, I'm gonna make a PRA particle system and use the fungi and the mushrooms to scatter these meta particles on and then bake those out, which means just saving those geo and applying a basic water shader to them. So after the redshift water shader is applied, I'll go ahead and relax the geo so it smooths out a little bit and then edit some of the blobs. There's just too many and it's just too distracting. So I handpick which ones I want to keep. Okay, I'll just do a real quick render, see how things are looking. I did the mushrooms earlier, you can see them up top there. I was pretty happy with how 
they turned out. I love how they catch little glints of light. So I'm not really happy with the distribution on these fungi. There's just too much, really distracting. So I'm going to just edit this, delete a few, and should be good. So as you can see, I've added a few other areas of these little drops. How I did that is I selected the forest pack and snapshotted it, saved it as geometry, and used the P-Ray again to distribute the little droplets, uh, hand placing them where I needed to, and it worked really well. I also put it in the grass blades, and it, it really helped sell the fact that this was a wet scene. So to get a little mileage out of all my work, I wanted to have two different renders, a sunny version and kind of a cloudy morning, just overcast version. So how I did that was I took the sun and turned up the turbidity and the ozone a little bit and did a render and changed my sun position as well to be slightly more overhead. Uh, the result is a kind of a, a wet looking, uh, more green blue type image, which I thought was pretty cool. So it's just neat to have two different versions to do color correcting on. So I want to do a really quick breakdown of how I do my color correcting. Once I have a final image, I apply an exposure control and just mess with the settings until usually I'm bringing it up a, a little bit brighter, knowing that I'm going to play with the levels and generally darken up as I go along. Then I use a lookup table. I use the film stock 50 in most of my uh, renders and my color correcting. Uh, what, I, what it does is it kind of warms the image and puts in a little bit of uh, contrast. At 100% it's way, way, way too much. So I usually end up using a fill of anywhere from 10 to 50%. And out of the gate, I usually this is the first thing I, I play with. So 50% looks really good, but as I adjust, uh, it usually gets a little too contrasty. So I, I end up turning it down quite a bit. And in the end, uh, it, 15 to 20% is enough to get what I want. Um, then I also, in, not always, but just in this render in particular, I use the crisp winter lookup table and very low percentage. It's all, all it's doing is just adding a slight blue cast to the whole image, which, um, which I like. Uh, then I go into a curves and I mask out the mushrooms and the foreground. I just want the curves to uh, hit the background to push it back a little bit. Uh, without it, you can see that the mushrooms just kind of blend in. And it's all kind of washed out. And this helps separate the, the two elements, the background and this middle ground mushroom. Uh, and then I do a general curve. Um, again, only a, a low fill uh, so it doesn't hit the whole image. Uh, I usually end up at 100% as I'm applying these and then as I go, I, I pull them down. Uh, next is just a little bit of color correction. What I'm doing here is uh, pushing it more towards the blue and taking out the reds, but I didn't want the mushrooms to be affected, so I masked those out. This one is a selective color. You can find it here, the bottom. And what this guy is doing is I'm taking the reds and in the reds, I am pushing out the, the cyan and pulling up some of the darkness of the reds. So if I turn this off, you can see that's kind of purple. So I, I, I want to push the reds just a little bit more and they, they just have like more of a glow when they're when they have the the green taken out of them um the next layer is just a very basic not really sure, i don't remember off the top of my head what it is oh it's just a basic um vignette just to center the attention more on the mushrooms and then a brightening vignette so the exposure is just pumped up a little bit in the area of focus, which is obviously the mushrooms. So once I'm happy with the final color correcting stack, I'll save it in its own folder and then I'll copy out the result and start working on that. And what I work on after that are very small minor details. So here's my the copy and all I'm doing is brightening up the foreground a little bit 
and then pumping up the vibrance and saturation ever so slightly. And then the big one is I'm using a color correction to push the background more blue. Uh, there's a, I like to watercolor and paint and there's kind of this loose rule of if you want to give something distance, you paint the background more cool colors and, and leave the foreground more warm colors. So just taking off of that cue, I'm just cooling off the, the background ever, ever so slightly and it just helps a little bit. After I'm done with that, I'll copy that result out um, by hitting Control Shift A and then copy Control Shift C and pasting in that result above everything. And then I do like my very, very final tweak, which is I go to lens correction and I go to custom. And then this is just to add a little bit of uh, chromatic aberration. Sorry, it's a little sluggish. So find an area here is cool. And I'll just start messing with the, the fringes. Uh, usually the cyan and magenta, um, see it just gives like a nice little natural fringe to it. Very cheap way of getting chromatic aberration without making it look over-processed. Um, I'm happy with that actually, I'll just stick with that. Uh, the, there's some photos, there's some cameras that, you know, have different colors. So based on your reference, you can pick what colors you want. If it needs to be more green or more purple or yellow. Uh, but for this demonstration, I'll just leave it as is. Um, it's very, very subtle, uh, that effect. It shouldn't be overbearing or it won't look real. Uh, but it does happen on all cameras. And then I'll just put a little bit of vignette in there. Just slightly and hit OK. And you'll be able to see a little bit. Zoom in here. Just enough to make it feel a little more photographic. Then I will apply a sharpen to this very, very, very subtly. Uh, unsharpen mask at 50% and apply. And there you go. Hey, thanks for watching, everyone. It was fun to show how easy and fast building up a detailed scene with the stump collection was. Check out our other tutorials on YouTube. Please like and subscribe as always. And check out megascans.se for new assets hitting the library daily. Go be creative, everyone. See you next time.